Ladies and gentlemen, the next frontier of graphics is here, yet again. Because NVIDIA's RTX 50 series of graphics cards naturally will see significant performance bumps over the RTX 40 cards. But also the new features are also what helps people choose to buy and upgrade from the older hardware. And in the case of RTX 50, neural rendering along with DLSS4 do indeed seem to be the killer features that NVIDIA will be incorporating with the next generation cards. So there's a lot of stuff that I want to tell you guys about here, including some updates to some of the specifications of the GPUs. So we're going to get into all of that after this quick message from the video sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Now, if you cast your mind back a couple of weeks, there were rumors that were swirling around courtesy of Inno3D, which of course is an NVIDIA partner, they're an AIB, and they basically said that there's going to be revolutionary new technology in the form essentially of neural rendering. Now, at the end of the day, it was a very... It was a kind of statement where we couldn't draw too many conclusions from it. There were also other rumours at that point that DLSS 4 would be launched or announced at the very least at CES. And if you think about it from a logical standpoint, that would make sense given AMD have already confirmed FSR 4 is being worked on and it's going to be extremely... Well, it's going to be AI driven, so there's going to be significant uplifts in performance and visual quality, you would imagine, over FSR 3. So you could imagine that NVIDIA wouldn't want to be left behind, so to speak. But yeah, one company mentioning this new feature doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen. After all, it could simply be a mistake by Inno3D or a feature that's going to be long in the future. Or perhaps it's not even relevant to gaming. Well, some updates have happened since then. Thomas on Twitter has found an RTX 5080 listing, and this is from a European retailer. You will see that, yes, GDDR7 is confirmed, but also DLSS4 support as well. Now, I want to just mention really quickly that there is a price here, but I don't believe any prices are finalized. I think that this is probably a placeholder price. And so you could logically say, well, does that mean that the retailer was guessing of DLSS4 as well? After all, it wouldn't be the first time that a retailer has done this. And I would potentially say yes, but we also have Coppertite 7 Kimmy who has chimed in and they have actually confirmed at the end of the day nvidia themselves have not stated this so take it as a rumor of course that dlss4 will actually be featured on the rtx 50 graphics cards and he has had a really good track record for what it's worth a couple of weeks ago when i was first hearing about the new rendering from inno 3d i was reaching out to my sources and basically i think i even mentioned this in a previous video one source did tell me that it is true um but I tried to get more information exactly what the features were, what exactly neural rendering did, because it's a very wishy-washy statement. There has been a lot of patents from NVIDIA, everything from texture upscaling and improvements down to like stuff for ray tracing and path tracing and so on and so forth. I was told that texture upscaling of some type is incorporated, but whether that is true for A and B, how it even works, I'm not too certain. There is a lot of potential, however, for this stuff because... When you think about it, NVIDIA are using like RTX Remix and at the end of the day, it's going to depend heavily on whether it's a feature a developer needs to incorporate or whether it's a feature that just kind of works just with DLSS support. So I, I'm obviously somewhat exaggerating here, but if it's just a checkbox that in, uh, a developer needs to, you know, basically enable in, uh, let's say, Unreal Engine 5 or what have you, obviously I'm slightly exaggerating on the ease here. That could have some really interesting and cool um, some elements to it. 
However, what would be ultra cool, and whether this is going to happen, and frankly, I have no idea in the longer term future, is whether it would be a feature that is basically just kind of baked into the driver, so a developer doesn't even have to do anything. And this could have some cool elements for like older games, like a game that's released in like I don't know, 2005 or something like that, could benefit from some really cool stuff. Um, so yeah, I'll be very curious to see exactly what NVIDIA does in the longer term. Jensen himself has stated that eventually he wants a traditional graphics pipeline to basically go bye-bye, whoop, out of the window, and instead it all shifts to neural rendering. Everything is basically AI generated. I think that's going to take a long time um, because it's going to... Basically, this is not the kind of thing that... It's going to be... It's not going to be accessible on a mainstream graphics card, you know, tomorrow. It's not going to be RTX 60 this works on. It's going to take a long time for this amount of performance. They've already had neural networks. I think it was Doom 1. I think it was like the 1993 Doom release is, run, is running on a neural network. But for one, obviously that's a proof of concept. And for two, that is not the same thing as having this being achievable on standard customer hardware, let alone a game which is really taxing such as i don't know alan wake 2 so i'm going to be very curious to see where this goes in the future i think it's going to be really cool that's just my personal opinion um just how dlss4 works though on the rtx 50 series versus an rtx 40 card that's also going to be a really big question for dlss3 for example we had frame generation that would work exclusively on rtx 40 cards but not obviously work on rtx 30 cards so whether there's a similar crossover with uh, DLSS 4, who knows? I wouldn't be surprised simply not only for this perspective of look, new architecture equals support, new cool thing, but just from a marketing standpoint, I guess we'll just have to wait and see though. Speaking of waiting and seeing, there have been lots of rumors concerning absolutely ludicrous power consumption figures, of course, for the RTX 5090, but Hong Sing 2020 on Twitter, of course, I'll provide a link to this as well, has said update. Next gen RTX uh, 5090, 575 watts. Copper Knight 7 Kimmy also chimes in and states that the RTX 5080 is 360 watts. Now, to my understanding, those figures are not 100% final. Um, basically, I was told by a source, a really good one, that uh, the figures basically can change until the 5th of January, which, when you think about it, makes sense because at that point, NVIDIA would have announced all of the specifications. Now, I want to stress, this is not to say that the number of CUDA cores, for example, or, you know, the amount of RAM is suddenly going to like, massively change or anything like that. Instead, I'm just referring here to how much juice the GPU uh, sucks from your power supply. I don't, like, I personally don't really care about the amount of power consumption as long as the card stays, stays relatively cool. Um... But then again, I know some people are a lot more bothered by that. Let me know in the comments, like, do you actually care about power consumption? Like, how much does it bother you? Now, obviously, if you would have a preference, you would say lower if it was the same performance because no one's going to be like, well, I'd rather, for the same level of performance, use twice the power. Like, no one is going to think that. On the other hand, if it was like a choice of, let's just hypothetically say 600 watts and you were to get like 100% performance, but then it could, you could also have like 450 watts, but get 90% or 80% of the performance. Like, where's the, where's the, yeah, just let me know your thoughts on that. Frankly, I don't mind the power consumption figures. I'd rather have as much, you know, performance as possible because I prefer to play on a desktop. But uh, ultimately, it's also kind of a heat related thing as well, as long as the GPU itself doesn't sound like a wind turbine. Um, <laughs> I don't mind too much. And the last thing I want to talk about in this video is a very quick update to the RTX 5090 mobile. Now, obviously, there are always differences between the mobile and desktop iterations of GPUs. So, for example, if you were to look historically at the 90 class cards for mobile, the specifications are often significantly paired back versus the desktop. We all kind of know this. And roughly speaking, and obviously, again, this does depend on generation versus generation, you could say that the 90 class card are more closely aligned to the 80 class desktop. Um, but 
In this case, uh, user Golden Pick Upgrade, who again has had a pretty good track record in the past, is stating that while the RTX 5090 Mobile will indeed be featuring a 256-bit bus, NVIDIA don't want to only outfit these cards with 16 gigabytes of RAM, and so allegedly the free gigabyte modules are going to be used, first of all, on the RTX 5090 Mobile card. So, of course, this means that we're going to get 24 gigabytes of memory. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case, although I haven't heard this personally, but just logically speaking, it would make some sense and help differentiate itself from the lower end RTX 50 mobile cards. There are a lot of rumors, and frankly, I've heard them myself, that um, NVIDIA do want to release a refresh and that will actually be utilizing the free gigabyte modules. And this would be a, an easier way for NVIDIA to nudge up the RAM capacities on various cards, like for example, the 5080 Ti or whatever. Whether they do that and what the actual differences are in the specifications, we'll just have to wait and see. For example, will the 5080 Ti still be a 256-bit bus? Or, more likely, will they still use like, uh, sorry, will they just simply use a, a wider bus? Who knows? I wouldn't be surprised, frankly, if they do do that, because obviously we've seen them historically do the same thing before. They've used like a, like a 4090 die and then like kind of shaved it down or what have you. With that said, take care of yourselves, guys. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.